So what? What else is abstract language useful for? It's useful for definition, classification, and technicality. In academic writing, definitions of key terms are used to make sure readers and writers share the same understanding of key academic words. Packed abstract language is often involved in definitions. A definition generally involves a key term that we want to define, some kind of verb that acts like an equal sign, like the verb to be, and then a defining word, which is a thing. In the case of climate, we have climate, means, and then what is climate? Climate is a pattern. That's the kind of thing that climate is defined as in science. But this is not just any pattern. Climate means an average weather pattern. Weather classifies the kind of pattern, and average classifies the kind of weather pattern. So this is not just a description of a pattern. It's not a good or bad pattern, but is a classification of the type of pattern. Classifying things like pattern and classifying adjectives like weather and average tell us how the world is analyzed in academic communication. If we look at a possible unpacked version of average weather pattern, we could say, for example, in the 1970s, it rained X amount, and in the 1980s, it rained Y amount, and in the 1990s, the amount was Z. We see many conjunctions, joining many short sentences together, and this can be packed into one noun group called an average weather pattern. Okay, we'll move on now to uh, introduce some more vocabulary for talking about language, meaning, and writing. We'll focus on the, the word sentence, clause, and conjunction. Please pause the video here, read this over. So, using this vocabulary, we note that the top sentence uses two clauses joined by a conjunction to express the idea, while the bottom, more abstract sentence expresses a very similar idea with less detail, but in a smaller space in one clause. It's generally true that packing information, shifting the expression from something like the top sentence to the bottom sentence, this shift results in more abstract writing. Okay, let's look at packing information in a clause in terms of the information that is lost. Read the two versions again and write a list of all the information in the top sentence that is not present in the bottom sentence. Pause the video now. And here's the answer for task 4a. I'll just make some general comments. These are examples of the kinds of specific details that are lost when we pack information. They include information about what is going on specifically and the details of the kinds of logical reasoning that is involved. They add detail, they place the idea in the material world, and by using conjunctions, they show dynamic reasoning between ideas expressed in the clauses. In contrast, the abstract version often presents a timeless view. Okay, now we'd like to talk about this uh, shift from concrete to more abstract wording in terms of information gain. So when we shift from the unpacked to the packed version, information is lost, but what is gained? Pause the video here. What we find is that details are lost, but what is gained is the ability to preview complex information, for example, in topic sentences, and to review the information, for example, in closing and transition sentences between paragraphs. We've seen that we gain uh, technical terminology, precision, we have uh, definitions of terms like climate. We get adjectives that classify, such as seasonal. And looking ahead in the video, 
we'll see that we also gain the capacity to express complex logical relationships such as cause and effect relations within a single clause. So for example, x affects y. And for example, with x, y changes. So instead of expressing these logical relationships in two or more clauses, which is more typical of speech, we will also look at how the abstraction allows us to organize information in the clause into what is already known by the reader and what is new to the reader. We'll look at that shortly. Okay, a little bit more vocabulary now. We'll look at the noun group and its parts, uh, adjective, adverb, and adverb phrase. And you might want to pause the video here. These words should help you describe and talk about your choices for either concrete or abstract expression. But it's important to keep in mind that it's not the grammatical words themselves that are important, but it's what they mean. Grammatical choices have meanings. We've seen that nouns and noun groups are things. They can be concrete things like a bunch of grasses, or they can be abstract entities like growth. Verbs and verb groups can be actions like grow or affects, or they can describe a state like is or has. We've also seen adjectives. Adjectives have the meaning of a quality of a noun. We've seen how they classify or describe a noun. And you've just read that adverbs and adverb phrases give more information about the verb. For example, bunch grasses begin to grow again. So when does the growing happen? This is circumstantial information. It tells us how and when, where, why things happen. We see several adverbs here, usually in the fall or early spring, and so forth. Finally, we have conjunctions that we've mentioned several times. Conjunctions talk about logical relationships between ideas, especially between clauses. So the cause-effect relationship or contrasting relationship, uh, relationship of time, such as as soon as, or relationship of addition with and, and so forth. So again, the important point about the grammatical terms are that they have meanings attached to each of them. And in this slide, we have the same figure, but in this form with the meaning on the top and the grammatical category on the bottom. So when we talk about our choices, we'd like to be able to say that the shift from grow, for example, in the first sentence, to growth in the second sentence is a shift from a verb to a head noun. And by this, we understand that a process has taken the meaning of an entity. So a verb as a process has taken on the meaning of a noun as an entity. Again, what does it mean? We can go back to our waves of concrete and abstract expression in writing, and we can see that more packing is evident in some sections, and less packing is evident in other sections. We found that, for example, definitions tend to contain more packing, giving examples often we unpack our ideas for that. Making a general claim, previewing, summarizing, for example, usually involves a lot of packing. And then supporting the claim, again, with examples, often involves unpacking because then we are dealing with real world things. Okay, we're here at task five now. In this task, please match the shift in words to the shift in the grammatical category. For example, from grow to growth matches with the shift from the verb to the head noun. And that's shown in this red arrow here. So from bunch grasses to of plants, which category does that match with? Please pause the video here and try this task.
Okay, and here are the answers. We'll be practicing some of these shifts looking ahead in the video. For task six, can you think of any versions of the climate plant growth claim that pack information more densely than the top sentence and less densely than the bottom one? So we suggest a particular strategy. One particular strategy is to replace a conjunction and a clause. So this is this whole second part of the first sentence uh, with an adverb phrase uh, that is a preposition and a noun group. So we're giving you a hint to start. The bunch of grasses begin to grow again and now we'd like you to be able to try pack the meaning from this conjunction and clause into an adverb phrase here. Pause the video and give it a try. And here we go. So an adverb phrase that packs the information as soon as the soil receives some moisture, usually in the fall or early spring, is with some moisture. So the bunch grasses begin to grow again with some moisture is a more abstract version of the conjunction and clause in the upper sentence. And we'd like to use this same example to show you some choices for packing the logical meaning of a conjunction using an adverbial phrase. So here are some options. We have, for example, the meaning of time. Of course, we can use conjunctions such as when, while, and as in the example, as soon as. When we pack these meanings, making them more abstract, we can use a preposition such as at, in, on, until, of course, relating to time. We can also use an adverb such as annually, these days, and so forth. And so on for the meaning of place. We can use a conjunction where or many adverbials that begin with prepositions or adverbs themselves such as overseas. And so on for meanings of manner, of cause, of condition. We have conjunctions and we can pack the meaning that is expressed using those conjunctions using an adverbial as we see here. Please review these as we're going to practice more shifting of conjunctions to adverbs and adverb phrases. Okay, and we'd like you to try this with an idea that we saw earlier about children and, and medicine. So again, we'd like you to try to pack the conjunction and clause uh, because they were cared for by medical staff into an adverb phrase that completes the clause the children are growing normally pause the video here and give it a try okay here we go so the children are growing normally due to medical treatment so here we have for example the conjunction because has become this due to okay and they were cared for by medical staff becomes medical treatment we we see for example that the verb to be cared for becomes a noun treatment staff is lost and the adjective medical goes to modify treatment instead of modifying staff these are some of the shifts that happen some further practice in packing two clauses into a single clause. Here we see a sentence about local food cultures. Again, please pause the video and try it. All right, so local food cultures change faster when global restaurant chains establish nearby branches. It could be packed to local food cultures change faster with the establishment of local branches of global restaurant chains. This one is interesting because the packed version is just about as long as the unpacked version. And we see, for example, that the conjunction, the logical conjunction of time and cause, which is when, gets packed into the preposition with. 
So we see that prepositions can often take a lot of logical meaning. And in this case, for example, the verb establish from that second clause becomes the noun establishment in this clause, and so forth. Okay, going back to the bunch grasses example, so we've seen how conjunction and a clause can be shifted to an adverb phrase, and this creates what we call a clause internal reasoning, in this case with a preposition, and therefore we don't need the conjunction and clause. So uh, another shift from uh, two clauses and a conjunction to a single clause is to use a causal verb or a verb with logical meaning, such as affects. This is a very dense language. So climate affects the seasonal growth of plants is, of course, an abstract version of the bunch grasses being to begin to grow again with some moisture and so on. So we have two strategies then here for packing the logic associated with uh, conjunctions. One with an adverb phrase, the other with a causal verb.